lately I've been given the opportunity to review the video plugin for DaVinci Resolve. The DaVinci is my software of choice for editing videos and what this plugin is about. It basically gives you almost 200 new looks for your footage and this is based on the real film stock. So actually you can just with one or two clicks grade your footage as it was shot on film. So let's dive in together to see what it's all about. So how I learned about this software. So actually the Hanser sales approached me to review their Adobe Lightroom plugin, but since I do not use Adobe Lightroom, I told them that I cannot review it because I don't have Lightroom. But then I checked their page out of interest and I've seen that they got actually the same plugin for DaVinci Resolve. That's how I got interested. Actually, I wanted to try the plugin for DaVinci Resolve. They agreed, so I got trial license for the plugin to play a bit with it. And I actually love it. So that was a no brainer to make a deal with the enhancer for the review. So the final deal is that I would get a free license and a small cut from affiliate sales and you will get a coupon for 10% off for every enhanced product. So I guess it's a win-win situation and everybody should be happy about it. If the product is not good, I wouldn't bother waste my time reviewing it. But I actually like the look that the Hanser produces, so I guess you would like it too. All links in the description down, down below, also the discount coupon information is there. Why would you even need this film look for your videos? So you got this expensive digital camera which creates amazing footage, but actually for most of the modern digital cameras, the look is very clinical, very clean. Sometimes the lenses are very sharp and you end up with very technical look, but actually it lacks some mood. So if you use the film look, then you can create the mood and you can actually match the picture with the story you want to tell. So for example, for documentaries, you might use different look than for something fabular. And for sports, you would use something different, probably with more contrast than for something else. So, so I say any plugin like that is very useful, especially for people who don't have much time to grade the footage. Sure, you can create the look yourself by clicking the wheels in DaVinci Resolve, changing the contrast, saturation, stuff like that. But this would take much more time than two clicks and you got a look which is ready to use. And actually the plugin for me got a sentimental value because I've been shooting analog camera with my dad long time ago. There is a lot of stock here on the list we've been using and, and the look the plugin generates is the look we got in our family albums. So I actually remember the boxes and rolls of this film, uh, which were all around my house when I was young. And so that brings really good memories. And actually I've seen that I like the looks which we actually used on our analog camera back then. And so the fun fact is that we weren't choosing back then which film to buy, but we were actually buying whatever was on the shelf because Poland back then was the communist country and you couldn't choose the film you want you had to buy what was available. But in most cases, it was either Agfa or Fuji 100. Then later it was Kodak. Sometimes you use some Eastern German stock, which I think is not here. And, and also some Russian, which I think some, some of them are here. But mostly I remember the Agfa stock and Fuji stock, which is here, and the and I graded this latest video with uh, the Aqua look, which looks very familiar to the photos I got in my family album in my home city. So actually, this is the whole list 
of the film stock which is available in the plugin and actually each of the stocks creates different look of course some are similar to each other at the end you will probably like five the most but then you got a really long list to choose from so the answer is a plugin for DaVinci Resolve you just install it and then it pops up in your library of plugins and you can use this to grade your footage and what are the options you may ask so I already color graded few videos with the plugin they are either for this YouTube channel for my different YouTube channels or just private projects and after working for more than a month with the plugin I I'd say I got some experience so I got the project which has been already uploaded to the channel opened in DaVinci Resolve we can go together to the options of the plugin and I must say there are plenty and actually I haven't used probably 70% of it so generally you get the plugin at the end of your library list in a film emulation group you just you just drag it onto the node and the plugin is there but all the footage in this project is Blackmagic 6K film gen 5 so first you have to adjust the input of the plugin and choose the proper camera and in that case it's Blackmagic 6K and then you have to choose the proper profile of the camera and in that case is gen 5 ISO 400 so first ISO of the dual ISO settings and then you can see that the, from the film look you already got the color grade here and there is a film grain applied so I turned off the grain and then the next tab is your film profile so you can choose from all 63 and whenever you change it you can see that immediately your footage is graded with the current film stock you can easily see that the looks are different but between some there is not much difference but generally you got 63 to choose from and then it gets even better because then you got print tab and you can actually choose the response of the film for the exposure so the default one is linear but then you can also choose Kodak print and as you can see there is a different exposure for the for the footage and then you got Kodak Endura glossy paper and actually the Kodak Endura is my paper of choice to print all my photos although I in most cases I choose the silk version but the color and exposure is exactly the same between those papers the only difference is the texture and you can actually see on the parade what is the difference between each print option and the exposure changes here depending on the print you choose and of course whenever you choose the film stock also the parade changes because you got a different rendition of the colors so 63 film looks multiplied by three options to print and you actually got 189 looks from the plugin just by two clicks so one click is your film choice and another click is your print choice so for example for this project I've been using Aqua Color 100 combined with the Kodak Endura print just two clicks and then there is also Cine on film look here but it does not work if your input is set to any camera or something random but it does work with Cine on and Cineon is just the industry standard from 90s to convert the film stock into digital image it is actually 10 bit log so if you work professionally with film you can have your workflow totally enclosed in Cineon and also very important for professionals that the plugin supports ACES so ACES is another newest industry standard for editing video so you can also enclose your whole project into the aces and you and you actually got the same format of the input and output and i will link the great tutorial for aces in the description down below 
if you're interested. But generally, the plugin gets you covered if you are a total amateur like myself, and also if you work in a professional environment, so either with ACES or Synon, so you are covered with the plugin. Of course, you can change the exposure and you can change the intensity of the film look here in the plugin. So actually, this node could be the only node you use for grading the footage. But I prefer using wheels and separate nodes for every adjustment. So that's why I got at least two, sometimes three nodes to grade and grade a scene or a cut. And then you also got, got which is very important, the film grain. And some time ago, I haven't been a great fan of the film grain, probably because YouTube compression always destroys the grain. So it doesn't look that good as it looks on your computer. But lately, using Film Convert or the Hanser, I started using Film Grain for some footage. And, and especially if you got really sharp lens, it gives your footage more organic look. And it's, I say, it's easier to watch or it's created a special mood. So it's very useful to have a Film Grain option. And regarding the film grain, the plugin, maybe that's my subjective feeling, but I think the one from the Hanser got the most organic look out of the three I got. So I got the Hanser, I got film convert, nitrate, and also there is a film grain plugin in DaVinci. DaVinci one looks very artificial and I never used it. I mean, I've tested it and it, it doesn't look the way I like. Then from the film convert is quite nice, although it's a bit too strong for my taste. Of course, you can adjust it, but in most cases, I've been using very low setting in the film convert plugin. And here also I tend to lower the amount of grain. But another thing is that you got so many options for grain here that you can tune it to the way you like it. So that's the big plus also of the film grain tab. And actually I use the false colors, which is quite nice because if you run it, you can check your exposure and you can see exactly how your footage is exposed on the screen or on a big screen I got to my left, which is my clean feed screen. There is a prob probably false color inside the Da Vinci itself, but it's quite useful to have it. So you can turn off a fa false color whenever you change some settings in the plugin. I would like also to address the input settings. So in that case, I got Blackmagic 6K. You got that camera here in the list. And actually they are updating list of cameras constantly. So when I first installed the plugin, there were like five, maybe six vendors. Now there are more and there are more models for each vendor. And I also got Sony cameras. So for example, I got Sony and a7 IV and for a7 IV you got only S-Log, which I'm actually recording at the moment, but I also got a6600. So what to do in that case, the camera is not listed here. So there is actually a very easy solution for the problem with the camera, which is not on the list. So I have loaded some footage from A6600 and one is high log gamma, another one is S log. And basically you have to create another Cilian node, put the answer on the second node and you got options here, so you can either have the REC 2020 or REC 709 as input. So you have to convert your current footage into REC 709 or BT 2020. And to do it, you just use color space transform. And I know that this is high log gamma from Sony. So this is REC 2020 and the gamma is like that. And then since the default timeline in DaVinci is in REC 709, I don't even have to choose anything here because the timeline is in 
Rec 709. This converts the settings of the footage into Rec 709. And then if I choose Rec 709 as an input here, I don't have to do anything else. And then I can apply the look and I'm ready to go. I can also choose the print option. And as you can see, it changes the look of the footage based on the changes in the parade. And for s log in A6600 is the same story. So another note, color space transform here, the answer here, and you got sources rec 709, and then I have to convert s log. It, so I know it's a s log 3 color space, and it is s log 3 gamma. So that way I got it converted from s log to rec 709. And of course, if you do this, you lose some dynamic range in your footage because it's already converted into rec 709. So that means you cannot push it that much. And you can see here. So this is the log look. And when I convert it, it changes the exposure. So if you want to adjust the exposure, you have to create another node before and change the exposure for the S log itself and then convert S log to Rec 709 or whatever color space you want to work. Maybe you want to work in BT2020 because it's the HDR footage. But generally, the easiest way in most cases for YouTube, you record in Rec 709. So you just convert with color space transform to Rec 709 and then you can have your Dehancer plugin configured whenever you want and actually you got the proper color rendition and proper gamma rendition. And then I can grade it however I want. But with one click you can change totally the look. And then if you want different print option, you can also change it here. And as you can see on the parade, it changes the look of the whole whole image. Of course, you can adjust it with a separate node, but here you got presets ready within one click. So actually you can grade any footage you got and get a film look with two clicks. And if your camera is not listed, you need additional few clicks to create color space transform node and use Rec 709 to create the film look. I don't think there is the easiest way to grade your footage and, and get really good results. Of, of course, you have to expose your footage correctly first in the camera. So that's the way if you don't have your camera listed on the list of the cameras, I guess this, this is the easiest way. There are also different ways and I guess I would go deeper in a separate video about that. And then also if your camera is not listed here in the input tab, you have to go down to the bottom of the plugin and you can click check for updates. And then the enhancer downloads all the available new film profiles and new camera profiles and you got, you got them automatically allowed in the plugin. So when I installed the first version, there was much less profiles for the cameras. Now it seems there are 68. So I guess the most of the modern cameras used for shooting film would be there. But if your camera is not there, you can still use the trick with color space transform node. And that way you can still create a film look from your footage, even if your camera is not listed here. So, so far I've been talking only about the pros of this plugin. Are there any cons? Yes. One con is the performance on my three years old computer. So my computer is Ryzen 7 2700X. So quite old with a chip main board and RTX 2070. It got 32 gigs of RAM, but the GPU got only eight gigs of RAM. And actually the requirements for the GPU memory for the 6K video is 12 gigs or even 16 gigs. And for 4K is eight. So as you can see, the playback on the timeline is smooth, but I got my timeline resolution set to half. And if I put full, then as you can see, it becomes choppy. And it's only choppy when the grain is turned on. 
for for example for this small take i turn off the grain and as you can see it plays smoothly but then when it switches to the footage with the grain it starts to be choppy so that's the one con and also regarding the performance the export times are slower than from film convert so it is around two times slower so i actually exported the same footage from the hanser and film convert in two versions one with film grain one without the film grain and for film convert it almost doesn't matter if the film grain is applied and uh, the video I, i've posted lately on on my channel which is around one and a half minute long exported in around 50 seconds using film convert both with film grain and without film grain and for the answer without grain it was one minute 15 seconds so not that much longer but with the film grain it was actually two minutes and 13 seconds so more than two times slower than from film film convert with a grain so so the performance is a bit worse for the enhancer than for film convert and that might be a con but probably if you got really fast computer either newer gpu like rx 2090 or if you got macbook m1 or m2 probably you cannot see the difference because it would be so fast anyway that uh, you wouldn't spot the difference but for my older computer the performance is uh, one of the cons i've seen there is also one very useful option in the answer so you can export the film look you've created with the plugin as a lot so for me it is very useful because i can use the look i've created in my photo editing software so it is either acdc or dark table both of them support importing the lats and then i can create the look based on the lat with any photo i got of course you have to shoot raw to be able to apply the lat and then you have to do some corrections regarding exposure but in most cases you can get the same look you got on your video footage but i guess it might be also very useful if you got external editing person who doesn't get the plugin and you want to share the looks with the person so you can generate the lot after you created the look and your other editor can use the look during the editing on his machine by the way an enhancer license for video plugin is for two seats so actually there could be two editors who got the plugin so what are actually the options to buy the plugin you got the pro version which got all other plugins included so you got all camera profiles all 63 film looks you got also print modes and then film grain and all other plugins which you can buy separately and this is 400 bucks and then you got the light version the light version got all the plugins i want so it is camera profiles all the looks film grain but anyway both version the pro version and the light version are cheaper than the film convert if you think about the look per dollar because in with the film convert you got 19 looks and here you got 63 so per film look it is cheaper than film convert and you also got option to have three different print options so actually you got like nine times more looks than in film convert so either option is actually cheaper than film convert but i guess if i would buy the plugin at the moment i would buy the cheaper option because i'm located in poland so actually here 400 bucks is quite expensive although maybe i would buy this one if i got a promo code and actually you can use my promo code jt and if you apply the code you got 10 percent discount for any product which is listed on the hanser page so either you buy the pro version or the light version of any other plugin or even if you buy their photo plugin you got a 10 percent discount with the promo code jt which film emulation i would choose for davinci resolve if i'm on a budget if I got around 200 bucks, my first choice would be the Hanser Lite on the assumption that my computer is fast enough to deal with it. 
So any M1 Mac or any PC with RTX 2060 plus. If I got something slower, then I will go with the film convert. Sure, you got much less options regarding stock, but it is much faster than the Hanser. So in my opinion, that's the very useful tool for any video or filmmakers. I actually use both the Hanser and film convert myself. And I like both, but the Hanser gives me more options because it got more looks and also more options regarding the final result with the three additional print options. It's also useful for YouTube, especially if you create some videos which are supposed to be documentaries or even scientific stuff. Maybe it won't give you more views, but I'd say if you create a pleasing look, then it would probably happen that the audience would stay longer with your footage. So I guess with the film looks, you can stand out a bit. And especially in my case, when I also work nine to five and video is rather my second hustle, I don't have time to grade everything from scratch. So film looks are very useful for me. So I guess that's it. Maybe there would be a follow-up video if someone is interested in different ways to color match the footage from different cameras using the Enhancer plugin. I checked few ways to do it and it seems some are better than the others. And I hope you would have fun color grading footage using the Enhancer. And I hope this review is useful. Cheers, mate.